So today's video is how to calculate index numbers. Now, before I go into the maths, very quickly, what is an index number? Well, in index number, the key feature is that indexes have a base year. And the base year is always set equal to the number 100 to make it easy to compare against that base year. So for example, if I had said to you that the index inflation for the UK was 100 in 2022, and then in 2023, the index number happened to be 103. By how much did inflation rise by for the UK in that one year? Well, very easily, you could tell me 3% because you know that from 100 to 103 is exactly 3%. So the whole point is to make it easier for us to make comparisons against the particular year. So before I go into a past paper question about how to do with this in terms of the step-by-step, -step, I want to show you a method. And the method works like this. Imagine you were given the following context, so not even in economics. If you were told, okay, we have miles over here and we have kilometers over here. So I need to keep the two variables separate. Well, if I told you that for every five miles, there are eight kilometers, which is actually true. And then you were told, okay, work out how many kilometers there are in, let's say, I don't know, 2,222 miles, random made up number. This method will always work as long as you accept two things. Number one is step one will always be to divide. And step two is that you multiply. But the other thing you have to accept is that you cannot go diagonally. In other words, I can't go 2,222 divided by eight times five. No, I have to go in straight lines. So either I go 2,222 divided by five and then times eight, and that will give me the answer over here, by the way. So I could do 2222 two, two, two over five times eight, and it will give me the answer. But I could also alternatively have done eight divided by five. So again, so step one is always divide, multiply by 2,222. So to just clarify, the only thing I'm not allowed to do is go that way. Yeah, I can only go that and then down, or I can go that up and across. And step one is always divide. Step two is all, always multiply. So that would also be eight divided by five times two, 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 two. You can plug that into a calculator and you'll see that the answer is exactly the same, right? Whether you did two, 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 two divided by five times eight or eight divided by five times 2,222, it's exactly the same, right? Why am I showing you this to start off with? Well, one of the typical questions that you may pre be presented with in an exam looks like this. So let's switch to a past paper together. So this is taken from uh, the old spec, unit two, June 2013. So dig it up for you guys. Excel. And two. Right, June 2013. Here we go. All right. So the data set that we need to consider is going to be on the first page um, or the second page. <clears throat> Here we are. So it shows the price of oil uh, from March 2000 or January 2005 all the way through to March 2012. Okay. And if I just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a bit clearer. So there we go. Yes, yeah, so that's January 2005 all the way through to March 2012. Just for us to reference, because I obviously know the question in advance. The price that they're going to get us to compare is going to be January 2005 to March 2012. So the price in January 2005, we know, is 45. And the price in March 2012, as we can see, is 125. Okay? Right. So the question is this. Referring to the data in figure one, calculate an index number for the oil price in March 2012 using January 2005 as the base period. Show your working. Okay. In the new spec, this will be a five marker, okay? Now, I, if I were you guys, I'd probably pause the video at this stage and attempt it myself and then kind of come back and see what the answer is because I'm going to go through it. But in terms of how we do it, let's do it together. So if I unshare and put my board up again. So what I know is the two variables that I am going to be working out, remember how I had miles and kilometers? Now I've got, well, the price of oil. So I'm going to put price over here. And I want to express it as an index. We're trying to calculate index numbers. So we're going to put index over here. Yeah. So remember to separate and keep them one either side. And then the two things that we're looking at is the price in January 2005. So January 5 over here. And then we had March 2012 over here. Right. If we remember the numbers, in March, so in January 2005, the price of oil was $45. So we've got 45 over here. And in March 2012, it happened to be $125. Right, my method works, but only works if there are three numbers. So what's the last thing that I need to add? Well, in the question, it said to us that we're treating January 2005 as the base year. 
Therefore, the base here is always set equal to the number 100. So if I now add 100 next to January 2005, cool. Can we now work it out using my method? Well, the answer is yes. And we can do it in one of two ways. Either I could do 125. So if you remember step one, I go up, divided by 45. And then step two, and now times the other number, so times by 100. That would give me the answer. Alternatively, you could have done it as 100 divided by 45. And then you multiply that by 125. They would give you the exact same answer, by the way. And the answer is 277.78. Like okay, it doesn't really make a difference. How many decimal points you put it to, unless they tell you in the question, okay? Right, let's work out in words what we, and by the way, that's the five marks, that's it, yeah? But in words, what do we just work out? What we just worked out is that it, the price of oil has increased by 177.78%. If you think about it, that kind of makes sense. Because if the price was $45 to begin with, a 100% increase on $45 is another $45, so that would be $90. But the price has gone above $90, 125 so it's gone up by over 100%, okay? And again, to understand why I was able to work out that it was 177.78, the index number being 100 makes it so much easier to compare because I just minus whatever the new index is from 100, and that will be the percentage change. Yeah, now they're not asking you for the percentage change. They're just asking you for the index number, and the index number, the answer is that. And that will give you, how easy is that? It's five marks, right? Now, just in case you got that wrong or in case you weren't sure, I'm going to make up a uh, uh, um, kind of data set for you guys, and let's work it out together. So imagine I got given something like this. And so let's say this is the price of, I don't know, copper. Let's do that. And let's do it in dollars. And this is, so let's say this is January 2024. And this is June 2024. Let's do that. Right. And then I'll start to point on this. Okay. Let's assume that is, I don't know, 325. And it's very expensive copper, but whatever. Uh, and over here, let's say it goes down to 130. Okay, completely made up numbers, but let's see if we can understand it. So the question would say something like this. It would say, um, calculate an index number for June 2024 using January 2024 as the base period or the base year. Okay, right, very straightforward. What do we do? We need to remember to lay it out in a very clear way. So we go price, one side, index, the other side, yeah? And we know that we're looking at Jan versus June. So we've got Jan here, June here, yeah? Okay, what is the price in January? Well, the price in January is 325. The price in June is 130. Okay, but we know one more thing. We know that the January being the base period means the index number is equal to the number 100, and that would always be the case. So now, 100. Do I have enough information to be able to do my method? Yes, I do. Very straightforward. All you have to do now is you go 130, divided by 325 times 100. That will give you the answer. Alternatively, could have done it as 100 divided by 325, and I times that by 130, and it will give me the same answer, yeah? Whatever that answer is, of course, this time it will be less than 100, and that will show you the percentage decline in the uh, in the price of copper. And that's it. And that's how you do index numbers. Hopefully that's really straightforward, and if you get that in the exam, you can easily ace that and wait under the five minutes.